Hey everybody, it's Leroy from Leroy Gaming. And in today's Baldur's Gate 3 guide, we're going to be looking at the Beastmaster subclass for the Ranger. We're going to cover features at level 1 of character creation, including ability recommendations. Going to give you a full level 2 to 12 breakdown. All spells available as you level will be shown. And we're also going to do a Beastmaster Animal Companion Showcase of upgraded level 12 companions later in the video. After that, we're going to provide you with some general equipment recommendations and my thoughts on multiclassing as the Beastmaster Ranger. You can use the timestamps below to jump to the area that most interests you. Remember to drop a like and leave a comment below with your thoughts, feedback, and questions. And now without further ado, let's check out the Beastmaster Ranger. Alright guys, here we are at level 1. Uh, the Beastmaster has a primary ability score of Dexterity. You're going to have saving throw proficiency in Dexterity and Intelligence. Your hit die is 1d10, so on par with Paladins and Fighters. And you're going to have proficiencies with Simple Weapons, Martial Weapons, Shields, Medium Armor, and Light Armor. Now, level 1, you're going to have a couple of important choices to make. The first one's going to be what's called a Favored Enemy. They change this quite a bit from the way it is in Tabletop D&D. But you can choose to be a Bounty Hunter. If you are, you will get Proficiency Investigation. And creatures you hit with Ensnaring Strike, either ranged or melee versions, have disadvantage on their saving throw. You could choose Keeper of the Veil. You're, you specialize in hunting creatures from other planes of existence. You gain Proficiency in Arcana and can cast Protection from Evil and Good. You can be a Mage Breaker. You have a history of battling spellcasters. going to give you proficiency in Arcana. And you can cast True Strike. Ranger Knight. This is going to gain you proficiency in history. And most importantly, armor proficiency in heavy armor. Or you can be a Sanctified Stalker where you get proficiency in religion. And you can cast Sacred Flame. The next option is Natural Explorer. And you get to choose one of these at level 1. You can be a beast tamer and then you would get find familiar this lets you summon a basic familiar just as wizards can for example do note that even though you're a beast master this will not make your familiars more powerful so you don't necessarily want need to take this you can also be an urban tracker which is going to give you proficiency in sleight of hand and then there's three wasteland wanderers and you can basically get resistance which again is going to be permanent up at all the time for cold fire or poison now when it comes to ability points i actually recommend strength 10 dexterity 17 constitution 14 intelligence 8 wisdom 16 charisma 8 now the reason we have 17 dexterity is that you can get an item from the hag in the early part of the game that can get you a plus one to dexterity and then you can get 20 dex rather quickly but if you're not counting that, you can always start at 16 and then go ahead. You can bump up, uh, for example, Charisma to 10 if you're going to be the, if this is going to be your main character. You know, you don't want to take negatives. So that's up to you. But I'm going to assume you're going to probably going to get the Hag item potentially. And so you can min max this. But do note that you can drop this one point and reallocate it as you see fit. All right, level two, you're going to have a couple things that occur. You're going to. First of all, gain two level one spell slots, and you're going to get to pick two spells. Here are the potential options. I'm going to mouse over them. Feel free to pause if you want to read over them. Ensnaring Strike is always useful for Ranger. Hunter's Mark is also another strong option, potentially. And don't forget Long Strider and or Speak of Animals. Both of these are going to be ritually cast meaning they're, gonna, they're not actually going to cost you a spell slot and you can keep them up permanently until your long rest. So they both can be useful. And Long Strider especially you can cast on other party members as well. So you can move uh, longer every time you do move. And then you're also going to get one of four different fighting styles. The first one's Archery, which is going to be plus two bonus to range weapon attacks. And if you're going to be going for kind of like a, a pet plus range build, which is very popular. I'd recommend picking that up. 
You can, of course, get defense. So if you want to get a plus one bonus to your armor class when wearing armor, you cannot go wrong with that. Dueling is really meant to provide you with a little bit of a damage bonus, which is plus two. But it's only when you go a one-handed weapon that cannot be also used as a two-handed weapon. And traditionally, this is the way you'd want to go if you can go one-handed weapon and a shield. And then two weapon fighting, when you make an attack with your offhand weapon, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the attack. So if you do want to go with a dual wield setup, which you can, since you are dexterity based, this is definitely the option to go. All right, at level three, you're also going to get to finally pick the Beast Master subclass. You're going to get the Ranger's Companion. These companions will get more powerful as you level up. They will look differently visually. And they're also going to gain new powers and abilities. At the end of the video, I will provide a showcase. So do check the timestamp out showing what all the major pets options are going to look like at level 12. Now, additionally, you're going to gain one level one spell slot here. You're going to get to pick another spell from the level one options you had before. You do have the option to replace spells as you level up if you have outgrown some of them. At level four, you're gonna to get to replace a spell if you want, optionally, but you're also gonna get access to feats. Now, when it comes to feats for the Beastmaster Ranger, you can't go wrong with ability improvements. Getting dexterity, for example, to 20 will make a lot of sense. But then your other options are gonna depend on what kind of range you're building. Remember, you can do one-handed weapon and shield setup. If you just want to do a little defensive tanky ranger, you can do the full dual wield setup. You can also do the ranged attack setup. If you're gonna be going dual wield, then highly recommend dual wielder. That's gonna give you plus one to AC, and it will also allow you to dual wield a larger variety of weapons. If you do choose to just go more defensive and use a shield on a one-handed weapon, you're likely to use a finesse weapon that uses your dexterity. So for that, defensive duelist is not bad. It basically lets you react and add your proficiency bonus to armor class when you use the right type of weapon. So that is an option here. And then I can also highly recommend sharpshooter. So this is gonna make it that with your ranged weapon attacks, you're gonna have no penalties for high ground rules, which basically means if you're shooting up at something, you're not gonna get penalties like you normally do. You'll still get the positive benefits of shooting down at enemies. And very importantly, you can turn on or off a passive that lets you get plus 10 damage to your attack for a minus five penalty to your attack roll. So if you have height advantage, for example, or other situations where you're gonna have advantage on attacks, this can make that minus five penalty much less of a burden. Level five is really big for the Beastmaster Ranger setup. You're gonna get one more level one spell slot two level two spell slots, you yourself will get the ability to attack one more time. And then your companions are gonna get more powerful. So basically your proficiency bonus is added both to their armor class and damage roll. So they get tank here and do more damage. You will also now get to pick one level two spell to add and I'll go ahead and mouse those over for you. Protection from poison is really good. Do note that this one, you it lasts until the end of your long rest and it does not require concentration. So that's really good. And of course, you can also replace the spell if you'd like. Now at level six, you're gonna get to pick another favorite enemy. So again, just as at level one, pick what proficiency you'd like. That's probably the most impactful thing here. You're also going to get to pick up another natural explorer option. And of course, you're going to get to replace a spell if you want. At level seven, you're going to get another level two spell slot. You're going to get to pick another spell from your list. You're going to get to replace a spell. And also as a subclass feature, you're going to get exceptional training. Your companions can now dash, disengage and help as a bonus action. This is really important because especially the help feature, if one of your other companions goes down, they can actually pick them up from the ground and keep them from dying. At level eight, you're gonna to get to replace a spell. You're also gonna get the lands stride difficult terrain feature. So you've become an expert at moving through the wilderness. Difficult terrain no longer slows you down. 
and you're going to get to pick another feat. At level 9, you're going to get two level 3 spell slots and access to new spells. You will be able to replace this spell as well. And here are the new level 3 spells to choose from. Conjure Barrage is good, especially if you're going to be in melee. Lightning Arrow is amazing for ranged builds. At level 10, you're going to get to replace a spell as normal. You're also going to get to pick one more favorite enemy, so this is the third one. You're also going to get one more Natural Explorer, so this is a third one for that. And you're also going to get the action Hide in Plain Sight. So this is where you camouflage yourself with your environment to become invisible and you're going to get plus 10 bonus to stealth checks as long as you stand still. Again, the problem with this is that it's only while you stand still. So the second you even move, this is going to go away. So it's like a weak invisibility. Now, level 11 is really where this subclass goes Super Saiyan because on top of getting one more level three spell slot and being able to replace a spell, your pets go nutso. You get Bestial Fury. Basically, you unlock their inner strength and give them an extra attack. And they're also gonna be getting much more imposing uh, with their of getting new abilities as you shall see. And then finally at level 12, you will get one more level three spell slot and most importantly, you're going to be able to get one more feat. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and show you the companion showcase. And I'm starting here with the bear companion. This is the powered up, souped up version. So you'll notice the level 12, it's got a ton of health. It's got a really nice stat line when it comes to their ACs being decent, good strength. They're going to have a couple extra abilities like Prey Scent and then of course all the upgrades that you got as you leveled up. They will also have three basic abilities that are added. The most powerful one that you get a high level is the Earth Sign Reinforcement where you summon a second bear. So now you have two bears. The other one's not as powerful as you can see here with less hit points and less AC but still really effective and great at soaking up damage and then you do have the goading roar which is an AoE taunt and a honeyed paw attack which is quite amazing because it's going to pretty much automatically disarm a target and if an enemy doesn't have a weapon it instead will be knocked prone so very very powerful the second companion we'll look at is going to be the boar Now the board companion, here is its stat line. It's not gonna be as impressive compared to the bear. You're still gonna have Prey Scent and all the other abilities. And a big thing for them is they actually get to go and go berserk, so they have like Barbarian Rage that they can go into. When they have that, they will actually, in addition to the two main attacks, they'll be able to use a bonus action as an attack, so to get Frenzied Strike. So yes, they can get three attacks per round. You can use boar charge as well that will knock enemies prone. And it has kick up muck, which is very powerful and it will slow enemies for up to two turns. It's a decent radius as you can see here. And remember, this is the slow that is the opposite of haste. And stat wise, basically it halves the enemy's movement. Gonna give a reduced armor class and dexterity saving throws by two. And very important that whoever is slow, they cannot take reactions or make more than one attack per turn. So this is huge, especially against enemies that maybe have two or three attacks. Next pet we'll look at is the Wolf Spider Companion. Now this pet has really nice AC at 21. You're going to have a lot of the same features as the other companions, but you will get dark vision also. Eight-legged waltz. It's passive, so whenever you start your turn on a web surface, you now gain extra movement speed and become resistant to poison damage. 
web walker which makes it so that you are not slowed down by walking on webs and then additionally you have a couple other abilities you're gonna have web which you shoot out a literal web and uh, you can end web enemies as you can see here and when they're in web they cannot move attack rolls against the affected entity have advantage and while its attack rolls have disadvantage it also has this advantage on dexterity saving throws so this is very powerful if you can get this to hit you can also have an ability to cocoon a creature and if something is cocooned it's trapped in a spider's web can't move or take actions at all bonus actions or reactions now it will end once it takes damage so it's a one hit paralysis kind of setup and then you have bursting brood where you launch a clutch of your boots to infest your target and this is what infest does I also did want to point out, since it makes a big difference, the web is actually quite huge. Take a look at that effect. Next, I'll show off my favorite companion, and that's the Dire Raven companion. Now, the Dire Ravens may not look like much as far as their health goes, but they have really nice AC. They have all the normal special effects of your companions pets we also get raven sight so it cannot be blinded now it's got a couple really cool effects first of all you can summon two more ravens now you cannot control these directly but they're AI controlled but they can still be quite effective and bothering enemies they have okay AC they have some of the powers that you gain plus come on you have three crows which is pretty sweet now your main raven, you're going to have the rend vision attack that will blind enemies, which is quite awesome. And also you can cast bad omen, so you hurl one of your feathers at the target, marking it as cursed. And when something is cursed, attack rolls against the affected entity have advantage. And then there's a feature that I could easily miss, but this feature is absolutely amazing. When you fly which of course on top of giving crazy uh, uh, mobility it also has a great effect so as you land you'll notice it does an AOE darkness around you and so now all of a sudden enemies are blinded if they go uh, stay in that darkness now do note while in the darkness you're actually immune to the blindness so you get all the positive benefits against enemies that stay in there and then things can't effectively shoot into hit you and they also are easier to hit by your ravens than anybody else in your party that has devil sight for example all right now the final companion option is the wolf companion let's take a look at that they have the second highest most hit points behind only the bear you can see all the normal bonding opportunities and options and then you have pack tactics, so creature has an advantage in attack rolls against the target. If one of its allies is within 3 meters of the target and isn't incapacitated. Also has a lot of AC, so he's got the best AC and hit point combo. Now attack wise, he has a basic bite. He also has a lunging bite. Now this has a chance to knock an enemy prone. It's not guaranteed. That's different than the bear and its effect. And you also have Lupine Slash. So this is interesting because you strike nearby targets within 3 meters using a Spectral Sword that appears between you and the Jaws. So this is also force damage. So it's unlikely something's going to have resistance against it. And it is basically an AoE attack so you can affect multiple enemies potentially. Alright, when it comes to equipment, what you pick is going to depend on how you're building out your ranger here. Do note there is a way you can at level 1 have even access to heavy plate armor. If you do you might want to choose the best plate armor as you level up. However you may also find really good medium armor that will get to take advantage of some or all of your dexterity bonus. So potentially picking uh, the armor type that's medium and I forget the names of it but there's numerous ones that you get as you level up that basically are made of a special material that allow you to keep your entire armor class bonus from dexterity it might be really good because you could get a plus five bonus 
from dexterity in that case and utilize medium armor after that it's going to be dependent on whether you chose to dual wield or not and if you don't then just get a good one-handed weapon that's finesse based and use a shield to get that ac even higher you can become super tanky as a ranger and of course especially if you're going to focus on range damage and i recommend it just get the best possible bows you can outside of that get equipment that's going to help you with your armor class and then supports that so whether it's effects to give you extra spells that you can cast or maybe extra spell slots you have a lot of options that's there to keep things diverse as you level up and as you find a variety of options all right finally let's talk about multi-classing as the beast master ranger the beast master ranger is actually a class that i am not the biggest fan of multi-classing because if you do multi-class, you're going to minimize the effectiveness of your companion. Your companion pets, as you get to higher levels, and again, you get your highest level power-up for your companion pets at level 11. Well, if you stop before then, you're losing some of that great potency as a companion-based subclass. So theoretically, you could go 11 levels and then do one level of another class dip into that but do remember that you will then sacrifice a feat that's going to be your big option this is not a subclass that you get very much from if you just dip three levels into it so again my personal recommendation is with ranger just go all or nothing if you're going to build around the subclass stick to it and make your pets as powerful as they can be all right guys that brings us to the end of my Beastmaster Ranger subclass guide. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to drop a like. Love to hear your feedback below in the comments. And as always, if you want to see more videos about Baldur's Gate RPGs and looter shooters, you were at the right place. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you for all your support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.